Visitors are always amazed when they walk through that entrance bay and suddenly you see the fountain, the grandeur of the Chancery building itself, to walk up those steps and to look at the seal of the United States of America. Sometimes sends chills up your back and you realize what a special place it is and what a great opportunity it is to represent the United States of America in India. This is a highly symbolic and very important arrival to walk around the pool, ascend to the plinth, be framed by the incredible seal. All of this was about setting a stage literally and figuratively for diplomacy. This is one of the shining examples of how America used architecture to create and convey a sense of openness and diplomacy. So we're very, very happy that ultimately this building will be restored. This building, designed by world-renowned architect Edward Durrell Stone, is really a fusion of our two cultures because he sought to bring together American modernism and some of the traditional motifs of Indian architecture. He had visited the Taj Mahal and other places in India, and you'll see that sensitivity in the architecture. The concrete stones that were made here on site made to look like the jolly work that you see in Mughal architecture. The water feature here, features that you see at some of the great palaces and Mughal structures and tombs around the country. I mean, it's just such an impressive building. And of course, you know, when you see it for the first time, you think this looks just like the Kennedy Center. But of course, it predates the Kennedy Center because for Jacqueline Kennedy, when she was out here, she was so impressed by this building that she selected Edward Durrell Stone to be the architect for the Kennedy Center. My role here is the maintenance supervising the facilities to maintain this historic building and its landscapes. I feel very proud to be working here. We have different people from our state of India comes to work in the embassy now. So we developed our own culture here in the State Department and you know, so that actually added values to our life. I think what we are facing right now is the space issues here in the building. There's always a challenge when you have a property with historic value of how you handle it when it's in need of renovation and we do need that on this compound. It has now reached a point where it can't function effectively and the challenge of balancing a secure environment with a sense of openness is an opportunity for us to look at the sort of tradition of Indian architecture of walled compounds and gardens that slowly reveal a sequence of spaces that go from the very public to the very private. So for us actually looking at Agra's fort, it's a Taj Mahal, or even the step wells, the idea of layering and carving within the land to actually create protective precincts really resonated with the program. So we felt very fortunate to be able to draw deeply on a culture that has found the magic of that relationship. The embassy is also significant because it's not just the functional buildings, but Edward Durrell Stone also designed a blending of nature and the architecture. And you really see that in the compound itself. You really feel like you're in an aviary in some ways. The number of birds, the sounds, the flowers. Uh, embassy gardening area is the home of many birds. You find a lot of sounds if you can come in the morning and see a lot of sounds. Yes. Bird sounds. Even you can hear now. In Delhi, there's a lot of pollution, so landscaping is very important. We can plant that plant which can give maximum oxygen to the area, so landscaping having a very important part. For us to be able to design a landscape and a campus together that can slalom so that there's vistas of buildings that have been incredibly important in the past, such as Edward Durrell Stone's building that needs to be seen in a new light, to view it now as a connected setting for diplomacy is really one of our biggest goals. So our idea was to strengthen the connection with this idea of a kind of green carpet. And the green carpet, in a way, becomes one of the most important unifying devices. And what I like about the new design is it respects the past but brings the future into play as well. That's necessary not only for security purposes, the security environment has changed since 1961, but also to deal with some of the challenges environmentally in terms of 
water and light. Water, it's definitely an important issue for the people here. And especially in Delhi, we know that the water level is depleting, so we don't have water in the future. Water, we recognize, is no longer just precious as a reflective, honorific tool, but it's also precious as a resource. And so this reflecting pool will now collect, during these monsoon seasons, a million gallons of water that could be utilized throughout the year where there's drought because we're changing literally the section of this to do more work. All of these kind of different factors have become braided together to create and convey a sense of openness and diplomacy. So we're very proud of the fact that by developing a master plan that links the architecture and the gardens, and that ultimately made connections to the Edward Durrell Stone building that will be restored to its original splendor.